What are things that you can do to develop your data and AI literacy? Well, I'm going to start off with a term that I think is one that can be kind of funny. I want all of you to become data skeptics. Notice I didn't say data cynics. The world is doing a very good job of creating data cynicism, i.e., I don't trust the data. That is different than a data skeptic. A data skeptic is questioning the data in front of them. Let's say someone presents to me a data visualization. It might be 100% accurate, but I'm going to ask some questions, I hope. I'm going to be a data skeptic. Why did you choose this visualization? Were you able to get good insight from it? You found this insight. Was there anything else? I'm not trying to say that the work is not accurate. I'm trying to bring it to life more. So I want all of you to develop your data skepticism. Ask a lot of questions. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean you need to ask all the time. I have probably annoyed my wife way too many times because I don't stop asking questions at times. We have to learn to balance that out. The flip side to data skepticism is I want you to be comfortable when your work is questioned. That is harder than asking questions. How many of us love submitting something to a boss, to someone else, and they question it and we're happy about it? I hope you are. We need to have our work questioned. We need to develop and we need to grow. We might not see the errors or things that are in our work. So when someone questions it, allow it to be a growth opportunity. Another skill that I want you to develop or something that can enhance your skills is to broaden your vocabulary, enhance your data fluency. I'm not telling you to go pick up a data dictionary and just read every term and try and memorize it. But when you see or hear a new term that is out there, pick it up, write it down, look it up, ask someone what that means. Just broaden your vocabulary. Who knows, maybe when I talk Markov chain analysis next time you see me, maybe you'll know what I'm talking about and make it easier for you to understand it. The third thing that I want you to understand is that data and analytics and AI are iterative processes, meaning I want you to fail and I want you to learn fast. I am not a big fan of the phrase fail fast because a lot of companies don't do it. They just have it as a catchy phrase. I want the term to be learn fast, right? Let's say you're attempting to build new data visualization and it doesn't work. That's great. Fail, learn and develop. One of my heroes is Nelson Mandela, and he has a quote, and hopefully I don't butcher it, that goes something like, I never lose. I either win or learn. And that's what I want you to do in data and analytics. You're never losing. You're never failing. You either are getting it right or you're iterating and learning. So let's now segue into what I call my three C's of data literacy. Curiosity, creativity, critical thinking. When people are going to ask me, or have in the past, where do I get started? You start with those three. You don't need to go back to school. I've been asked that. Do I need to go back to school for a degree in statistics? Do I need to go back and do this? Are boot camps better? Where I really want you to start is those three C's. Number one, curiosity. I just mentioned it, right? Curiosity sparks analytical work. Ask lots of questions. I have children. How many questions do you think I get on a daily basis? I have five. Right? I'm getting questions all the time. I hope my children know that they should never stop asking questions. For whatever reason, when we become adults, we stop asking questions. We forget about it. And so we have to understand that we need to regroup in asking questions. With that, let's go into the second C. That is creativity. Data and analytics is not easy. It can be boring. I know it's hard for me to say that with as big a nerd as I am. but Use creativity in your data visualizations and your data stories. The third C is critical thinking, and it dovetails right with curiosity. Set time apart to look at problems, dissect the data, and analyze it. Now, let me go through my five-step plan that can help you, and we can wrap up our masterclass today. But the first thing I want you to do, if you are trying to set your intention, I want you to understand you can't boil the ocean. There is a lot of things out there on data and analytics. So start small. Just make sure you start. The first step should be, what is the outcome I'm looking to achieve? If it's learning to read data better, there's an outcome. If you're learning to increase your data fluency, there's an outcome. That's your first step in this. Your second step is you set a strategy to achieve that outcome. What tools do I need? All of these things. The third step is the tool side. Let's say you're working on developing your ability 
to build out data visualizations. So we're building out these data visualizations. We want to empower ourselves to build them better. Do you have the right tools to do it, like a Tableau, a Click, and all these other tools? If you're trying to get really good at understanding data, are you only looking at surface level data? Or are we diving into behavioral data to see what people are truly doing? So we need to have the right tools in our pocket to be able to empower us. But the fourth step is understanding where is our skill set. I can't just buy tools and think I'm going to be able to do this. Instead, assess yourself and understand, do I have these skills or do I have to start a different outcome to learn new skills to help with the data side of things? But don't be shy. Go out and fail and tackle it. And then the fifth step in this process is make sure your environment is secure and one that will help you succeed. I love to journal. I love to read. I also have a big family. So for me, I like to be up early in the morning reading, journaling, maybe writing in my book, just making sure I have set aside an environment that is conducive to my success. So those five steps again are, number one, set your outcome. Number two, set a strategy to get you there. Number three, do you have the right tools? Number four, do you have the right skills? And number five, do you have the right environment? Use that five-step plan for both your data and AI literacy work. I hope you've enjoyed this masterclass, so stay nerdy with me, my friends.